Crucible Knights are so cool. Big tanky armor, flashy weapons, and sweet angel wings. Well, if you want to get these things in Elden Ring, you got to kill the thing that uses them. That means if we beat the Crucible Knights, we get the tanky armor, the flashy weapons, and the sweet angel wings. Well, two out of three, not bad. To watch me suffer live, follow me on Twitch. We've suffered a lot for this one. Join the Patreon to justify the suffering and make sure you're subscribed. That way you don't have to suffer without a video while you eat lunch or take a poop break. Let's get started with the secret starting class. Remember, that means it's something you can grab early in the game, even if that isn't easy. We'll kick things off as a prophet because technically it has something the Crucible Knight can use, a sacred seal. I suppose the Confessor also has a sacred seal, but I can't deal damage unless it grabs another spell, and we don't want to grab anything extra that isn't crucible -y. More on that later. For now, Cowabung into Limgrave. Let's get a Crucible Horse, then a Stone Sword Key. We'll need a few. Push Alex out of the hole. Both of the Ashes of War of the Crucible Knight can absolutely wreck things, and we're going to get them very soon. Don't hold your breath. Grab that Physic Flask, then immediately get better ones, and we can imagine being a Crucible Knight in Fort Height. Even if we're not a Crucible Knight yet, guess we can't be a Fort Knight. And that makes sense. It's going to be a long time before we get a number one victory royale. Dragon Barrow now. We need a few things here. Another Stone Sword Key. Why not? And Fort Pharaoh for the other half of the Dectus Medallion. Then just warp out. We don't need to take an extra death. There is going to be more than enough of that later. I don't want to spend any runes we don't have to, but I want to level up the seal as much as possible before we have to duke it out with a Crucible Knight. Or two. So Limgrave Tunnels will give us the Smithing Stone ones we need before moving on to Lernia. Warp through, jump down, get the key warp through again. Not sure I'm ever going to find a faster way to do this, we'll just narrate it faster. More rocks in the Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave for some Smithing Stone 2s and 3s to level up the seal, and somber stones we can use for the Crucible weapons we will surely get soon. First, we get killed. The miners use their lasers, and then they beat us to death with some sticks. Can't hit the Crystallion since it doesn't technically drop something necessary for the Crucible. Those are the rules. Because I said they are. None of this means anything. It's all just rules I made up. There are more smithing stones on the surface of the lake, but we haven't leveled our vigor up at all, so we get sniped by the lobsters. Oof. More fun in the ruin strewn precipice, and these vulgar militia are precipiced off. We gotta ring around that Rosie because nothing can get hit until we have a piece of the puzzle. Yeah, we lose ring around the Rosie. There's a lot of good smithing stone fours here, though, and at the end, you can quit out so a bat doesn't hit you on the ladder, but uh, then he just spawns in by the other ladder. I've made a huge mistake. Oh well, now we have all the fours we need, can you guess what's next? That's right, Clone Wars fans, it's fives. Head to Altus and into the sealed tunnel for some free fives on the way down. Gotta work a bit to get these smithing stone sixes from the statue, a virgin breaks it open. Thanks, virgin, hopefully you get laid soon. It also killed us. Then we died to the bomb rocks because I wasn't paying attention, my bad. Finally, we dip into the Altus tunnel for the rest of the smithing stone fives. Now we'll stop by the Ariza Heroes grave because it's time to fight the Crucible Knight. I'm ready, I'm ready. No, you ain't. Okay, it's actually just because we'll be coming back here later. I'm trying to make the bear hit the statue you for some more smithing stone sixes. Field trip to the Weeping Peninsula now. Kind of for the sacred tiers, mostly for the faith boost tier. Boosts our faith by 10. More smithing stone six up Gelnir, but I did a bad job here and the bear hugged me twice. That was dum dum diddly dum of me. The last ones we need are in Volcano Manor, so we have to climb these ladders. What a thrill. One upstairs, one's in town, and then we get the seal up to plus 19. That's gotta be enough to win, right? But I don't know about that. Okay, let's make the Knight's Cavalry fall off a bridge. That's not my fault. We didn't hit it with anything. It's just for a little bit of vigor to make sure we don't die too much in the Hero's Grave. Time to go die a lot in the Hero's Grave. Now you're talking devil team. Before we even get to the Crucible Knights, we have to go through the dungeon, and the dungeon is also bad. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about it because it's not nearly as bad as the boss fight, but yeah, it's pretty bad. Avoid a chariot, do some patented FromSoft platforming. Always reminds me of this section from Donkey Kong 64 where you have to rescue Tiny Kong. I couldn't do that when I was a kid. My cousin had to do it for me. Maybe I should call him and see if he's good at fighting Crucible Knights. Bonk the pillar. It blows up the chariots, except I guess it did because the chariot's still here and killed us. Huh. Well, that opens the path to the boss next time we come in here. It's the Crucible Knight duo, and let's start with why the hell would we start with this? Look at our level. Level 34. This is the Crucible Knight duo at level 34, and if you can't at the very least acknowledge that that is a stupid low level for this fight, I don't know what to tell you. We can also fight the Crucible Knight in the Stormhill Everjail to get the Tail Spell. That's the only other one we could fight in the overworld without killing another boss. The one that gives you the shoulder tackle is after Margit. The one that drops the shield is in the underground, so we'd have to beat Radon. The one with the spear is 
in Deep Root, and the one with the Fire Breath is after Rykard. So, per my weird rules, if we got the tail, we'd have to come here and fight these Crucible Knights with the tail. Or I guess we'd have to fight Rykard with the tail, Radon with the tail, the Godskin Noble before Rykard with the tail, a bunch of stuff with the tail that wouldn't get us anything better to fight these Crucible Knights with until I guess we hit Siluria. The tail requires 27 faith, which also means less vigor. And also, it's terrible, it's slow, it doesn't get boosted by anything until you have the Crucible armor. I have my issues with Catch Flame, but it is infinitely better than the Crucible tail on its own. Add in that we don't need to invest in faith as much, and that's the explanation for why we're doing this first, even though doing this first sucks. It's just, if we did something else first, I think it would be worse. There are two Crucible Knights here. Does that make this fight twice as hard as the other Crucible Knight fights? No, it makes it worse. Because each of these individually have more health than any other Crucible Knights before goddamn Faramazula. They have more health than the ones in the Royal Capital, more health than the ones in Noxtella, and more health than Siluria. And the one that isn't Ordorvis is just a clone of Siluria, with more health neat. They also both attack at the same time, which is harder than fighting them individually. Allegedly, they've put a patch into this game to make the duo bosses less aggressive when you don't have the Spirit Ash, so that both bosses won't attack at the same time. No way. Not this time. We created it. Not this time. Not this time. Yeah, maybe they were more aggressive in a previous patch. I would say there are a few times it seems like the AI is behaving properly, but I would say for the most part, they do not give a single shit that we don't have a Spirit Ash. They are attacking us both at the same time. Hey Phil, why don't you have a Spirit Ash? Good question. So in this version of the game, we don't have a Crucible Knight Spirit Ash. Maybe eventually there will be one in the DLC. Seems like a cool idea. We've got plenty of other repeated bosses, especially duo bosses, as Spirit Ashes, like the Pumpkinhead or Beastmen of Faramazula. But since we don't have a real Spirit Ash, we have to make one at home later with the Mimic tier, which is locked behind Radon and the Mimic tier boss fight. So we can't rock it yet. We've got to fight the duo solo. So back in the reverse boss order run, the boss just froze and it doesn't move. I think it's because we summoned Oga, but we summon Oga further into the room than they normally activate their aggro. From the comments, someone said we must have taken a hit from the skeleton on the way in and that glitched their AI. I believe we must have. That's why our HP wasn't at full. And it's also why we're trying to get the skeleton to hit us over and over again. But if that's how the glitch works, they patched it. We do this for a long time and the AI never freezes. So good news everyone who enjoys watching me suffer when we win, we will win by learning the movesets of each of them and how to punish them. Step one, it's kiting. The most important part of this fight is just running the fuck around in a circle until they're spread out enough that maybe you can hit one for like a second. Oh, let's go fly a kite. Little problem though, Ordorvis has a double dash attack and will run up and stab you in the ass while you're handling the spear guy. It's not a problem, you get to resolve. You just get hit sometimes. Step two, do the spear knight first. While the spear knight is more aggressive than most other bosses, they aren't as aggressive as Ordorvis. Sure, they have a huge flying dive attack in phase two, but that's actually one of the best moves to punish with just a quick roll giving you time to catch two catch flames. As long as Ordorvis isn't shoving his entire sword up your ass while you're trying to punish it. Also, spear guy doesn't have a shield, that's important. Step three, figure out how the goddamn shield works. Ordorvis's shield is strange. Sometimes it lowers the damage of your attacks. Sometimes it doesn't. When they do the dash attack, if you use catch flame on the side of them that has the shield, it doesn't block it. But if you parry and hit a catch flame where the shield would reduce damage until you move, uh, it reduces the damage, even though they're parried. Step four, parrying is stupid and bad. You know what? We spent a long time on this fight. We have a lot of footage to put in the background. Time for a little mini parry rant. Parrying is the French press coffee of Elden Ring. Coffee has a purpose. It's to wake you up in the morning. It's got a bitter flavor, but it's hot and caffeinated and satisfying. French press coffee is the same thing with 10 minutes more work and eight devices, and it's way more complicated. Does it taste a little better? Maybe, but holy shit, who cares? It's 6 a.m. and I don't want to put through the effort of making a meal to get a cup of coffee. I hate putting water and ground into a coffee maker some mornings. The only reason to make French press coffee is to enjoy the feeling of superiority you get for making French press coffee. That's parrying. Parrying in Demon's Hole through Sekiro kinda rules. In fact, it gets better as the games go on. Plenty of major bosses have parryable attacks. It gets you an instant critical hit and it's very, very satisfying. Then in Bloodborne, you do it with a freaking gun and in Sekiro, you have to do it or you just can't play the game. Elden Ring came out after Sekiro and I feel like the dev team thought, 
Oh shit, if they can parry everything to death, this game's easy as pie. Let's make parrying suck. And then they made parrying suck. First, parrying a boss no longer guarantees a critical hit. It generally takes a couple of parries. You still get punished for whiffing a parry by taking damage, even if you're using a 100% physical resistant shield and your stamina gets erased. So you probably can't follow up with a healthy dodge. Well, just hit the parry, do doy. Yeah, champ, I get it. Just hit all your parries, hit all your attacks, never take damage. Except how many Remembrance bosses can even be parried? Morgoth? Melania and Radagon. Not even the Elden Beast in Phase 2, so we're looking at two and a half Remembrance bosses you can parry any of the attacks. Add Malekith, that's three and a half, but you can't parry him with a normal shield and you can't parry him until Phase 2, so never mind. Two into two halves or three if you want to be weird about it. You know what else all of those bosses have, though? A bunch of moves you can't parry. The player version of the Ducky Dance, it can be parried. Melania's version, no. Lots of you want me to play Elden Ring Bingo, and hey, thanks, but I am not nearly good enough for that. I'm bringing it up because parry Margit four times before beating him is a regular bingo square. And do you know what the good Elden Ring player does after they hit their four parries? They stop fucking parrying. Waiting for the parryable moves is a waste of time. Just dodge stuff and hit. Oh, also, there's better parrying with guard counters. They're easier to pull off. They don't have a steep penalty for whiffing. And you get a critical hit just about as quickly. You can also use them against every boss. Now, bringing it back to the Crucible Knight duo, uh, duos. Your parry has to hit proper timing against attacks at a proper location. But if you're locked onto one boss and another one's diving at you, you're not hitting that parry. Waiting for the parry window against Margaret by himself is kind of annoying. Waiting for the parry window against Ordorvis or Siluria Jr. while one of them is trying to turn you into pudding is pretty much impossible. If you've managed to get one of them on their own, that's great, but the parrying is going to be risky and holy shit, I can't be risky in this fight. Remember how the shield can protect Ordorvis even when he's stunned? Because the shield can apparently protect Siluria Jr. when they're stunned. Because after we parry them, they take half damage from Catch Flame and they don't have a shield. What the fuck? WHAT THE FUCK?! After figuring that all out, we put parries where they belong in the goddamn trash can. If you enjoy parrying in Elden Ring, I'm happy for you, but it is French press coffee. The only benefit you get from it is being proud that you did the extra effort to do it. So, next part of the strategy, dealing with tail time. Oh yeah, it's tail time. Remember when I said that you get the tail as an incantation and it's super slow and basically an invitation for the boss to take you to unhappy town? Well, Ordorvis' version comes out frame one, like he's Smash 4 Bayonetta. Phase two of Ordorvis erases the punish windows you had in phase one because of the tail. He also has two tail attacks. One is a quick get the hell off me button that swats pretty much in Ordorvis's general area. The other one is the hand of God that stretches across the entire arena and probably hits the fucking fire giant. Hey, can I have either version of that? Either the fast one or the one with the hitbox the size of a semi truck? It's fine. You can roll through it. It just took me a long time to realize I had to roll through it even if I was on the other side of the room. Let's see. What else do we have? to talk about. Oh yeah, we're level 34. That's not very high and doesn't give us a lot of options for things like Dex to cast faster or Faith to hit harder. We tried grabbing the Fire Scorpion Charm from Fort Laid, which increases our fire damage by 12% and gives us 10% less damage resistance. Swapping the Two Fingers Talisman for that, we lose 5 Faith and because of that, we end up doing a whopping 4 points more of damage. Womp womp. We're not using that. At 2 points, we get really close to winning and then realize we don't have enough mana. So the difficulty goes up as we trade a Red Flask in for a blue flask and get one less heal. Ugh. Also, using the spear isn't really an option. We can't upgrade it since the crucibles don't use it, I guess. Those are the rules. What are the rules? What are the rules? Let's talk about moves, the ones I like and the ones I hate. Spear Knight, I just hate the dash attack it does. It goes way further than I think it will. They open with it like 60% of the time and I get hit by that 80% of that 60% of the time. The grab it gets in phase two has some questionable hitboxes and the occasional melee Marth hand magnet grab. I'd respect it more if there was a sound effect. I like just about every other attack the Spear Knight does after I get my training in. If they swing fast, don't punish. They're gonna put the spear in the ground quickly. You have to hit them after they pull out. Circle Strafe, when they're winding up, you don't even have to roll, but I usually do. Honestly, it pays off sometimes because Ordorvis decides not to obey the AI. Big old Omega Drill isn't actually that hard to dodge. The hitbox is pretty forgiving for a sloppy roll, but it's important to note that the columns do not block the Omega Drill. They do not really block anything. They're purely decorative. The dive in phase two is great. It's a free punish. You can get three catch flames on off if Ordorvis is behaving. Ordorvis, he's worse. He's a goddamn asshole. Uh, most of his moves have the shield up at least a little bit, but remember his shield is intangible and will exist or not exist at random intervals. 
That thing does not obey the laws of physics at all. Okay. The stomp isn't bad, but it's unpunishable on both of them. By the time you finish jumping or rolling, they're swinging again. We want the two-handed sword attack after the stomp. You can get some nice punishes in there after the overhead swing and then after the spinning slash, as long as it works, which it doesn't always do. Honestly, the dash attack that's most annoying when you're trying to focus Siluria Jr. is the best one to punish when Ordorvis is on his own. You can always get to the side and burn through the shield because I guess it doesn't exist. Very cool. Phase two of Ordorvis totally changes. The dive bomb attack seems like a good punish window, but... It's a trap! Because if you punish him here, you get the tail time. That's pretty much every attack this phase. Remember the dash attack we love to punish? Well... It's a trap! Turns out the attack you punish is actually the tail, but you need to bait it out. After he baits you to punish with an attack you used to be able to punish. It's a double bait, which should be okay. Just make sure to clean up so there's no chafing in between. Also, hey, why don't we have a dive bomb attack from Soft? I want to get cool angel wings and dive bomb shit. Anyway, learning how to punish the tail and avoid the Omega Super Tail is the real struggle, but it's actually just the last struggle. The real struggle is obviously the gank. These gank fights are baloney if you don't have a spirit ash because you're absolutely supposed to have a spirit ash there is no other explanation for the baloney these fights are without them why are there so many duo bosses added to this game and why are they all so aggressive ornstein and smo they make smo a big boy who has to chunk a chunk a slowly while ornstein keeps up with you better lothric and lorian they play piggyback so you can hit them both at the same time and attack at the same time so you can dodge both of their attacks at once hell even double dragon riders that's right we're defending double dragon riders from dark souls 2 but the second one stands up on a little column first and doesn't come down until you bait the other one to hit the thing he's standing on. You know what these double boss fights remind me of? Man Eaters from Demon's Holes, the first Souls game where they were kind of just ironing out the design and Man Eaters are goddamn infuriating. I think the Spirit Ashes are the way to fix that. Anyway, here's the winning run. Head in, trade with Siluria Jr. after avoiding the stomp. Looks like Ordovis is behaving properly while we keep hitting Spear. Randomly, stalls out for a little while before entering phase two, but we'll take it. Dive attack, get some fiery punishment, and then we can hit a drill punish because Ordovis is behaving. Don't get grabbed, it's rule one of Elden Ring, and we still have five flasks left for Ordovis, who we haven't hit yet. Shoot. Circle back around for the big slam. Forgot to mention that move, but ideally you just go around the butt for two hits. You can also come in from the front for one or use it as an opportunity to flask. Even solo, this dude does not like it when you flask. We're in phase two, bait the dash and the tail attack. He won't do the tail attack after a big slam, so that's a free window. Don't punish the shield bash. It's a trap. It might seem like one of his slower moves, but he bounces back really quickly from it. Big tail, we've learned how to roll, then bait the smaller tail for another punish. The dive is a really good time to flask up, so we have as much health as we can. Unfortunately, another big slam and we're out of focus, so we have to flask up. But after another big tail, the fire doesn't hit. Oh God, oh no, 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 we're still in it, we're still in it. Big slam, that's the punish. We finished getting the crucible gear at five hours and 20 minutes minutes with 100 deaths and two boss wait we're not done oh no we're literally just getting started i wonder if we can beat the rest of the game faster then we got the gear we should at least have less deaths because the crucible gear kind of slams Small problem, this shit is also heavy. So right now we just have the sword and the main armor. No pants, no gloves, but plenty of service. Service for the Tibia Mariner to test that Ash of War on Ordorvis' greatsword. It's a big charged slam attack that pretty much only scales with strength, just like the weapon, because it barely scales with faith. If you're having trouble using this sword, you're probably investing in faith. Stop. Incidentally, it does rip. Tibia Mariner is barely a boss though. The clean rots are a bit more of a fight, but not really. These shockwaves stack up with the slam to basically instantly break the stance. Keep that in mind for later. This is another great way to handle a gank fight. Kill them, just kill them really fast. Golden Scarab acquired, let's go get some food. Nerd Juice only takes three hits, or I guess like, I don't know, like 12 with the shockwaves? I don't know how many shockwaves there are. I didn't count. Same with patches, absolutely destroyed. We need pickles, being a Crucible Knight actually requires quite a few stats. Vigor, to live, endurance, to wear the armor, strength to hit, I guess really just those three. But three stats are kind of a lot at this point in the run. Putrid Avatar is easy peasy. After everything we went through with the Crucible Knights, we won't be losing to uh... Shouldn't have worn that petard if you didn't want to be hoisted by it. Yeah, we got bonked twice. Hey, just have to work out the timing, right? All these are first attempts through the runs. Even the third successful run, we got very close to dying. I think I'm trying to be too fast to make up for how long it took to get started. Grail has the decency to die fast, though we took quite a few hits there as well. Stormvale Castle time. One spinny slash breaks Margaret's stance, we crit, and then another one doesn't break his stance. He either has super armor as he does the phase transition, or he hopped out of the last little hit. 
Smart move, not to get hit. Gostok opens up the door and we reward him with some murder. Good job, you died. For Godric, we have the stance pressure tier. It makes the AOW break his ankles. He has more ankles to break, it does make sense. In less than a minute, we're able to slam the hell out of Godric until he's a broken pile of mush. The Godric Great Rune is also really, really helpful. We need everything, and for a while, because our stat requirement is so severe, we're gonna be staying at 35 base vigor. So Godric's pushes that up to 40. The Crucible Armor is thick enough, kinda makes up for it. Kilga has the rich sword talisman and hey that looks a lot like our sword very cool she dies so fast there's no real reason to show the fight Godfroy is just Godric again didn't I kill you already but here we'll talk about something else with the ash of war it gives you a stupid amount of poise to make sure you get your hit off it can also mean you get hit a lot good thing the armor is big beating Godfroy gives us the Godfrey talisman not confusing at all boost the damage of charged ashes of war the slam is a charged ash of war 15% pretty big boost now it's time for another Godfrey super fan Radon and hey if we can gank him we're gonna gank him it's the crucible night way after all when he looks at someone else we hit him with the super big slammer jammer I just realized Ordovis's great sword windup is basically the banana slammer Donkey Kong uses great this could hit a little bit harder if we leveled up, so let's smash the Godskin Noble. No duo gank here, there will be one later. For now, just giant slam, giant slam, take a little trade and almost die to the rollout. But you didn't! Shortcut to the Stone Sword Key, then go through the Smoke Door for the Somber Stone 7 and the Critical Hit Talisman. With the rest of the stones from the Dragon Barrel, we can grab a pocket and get a plus nine sword. Have you ever seen a dog explode? If you have, I'm very sorry. And if you haven't, here it is, kaboom. Can Moongrum parry the spinny slash? No. Now, Renala is very funny. I'm gonna take this real slow so you get to watch as much as you can. The kids get smashed. Obviously, it's gonna be a one cycle in phase one. But when phase two starts, we avoid the Death Star laser and... <laughs> yeah, that hits pretty hard. Obviously, the other Crucible stuff is going to be just as good. How hard is the Crucible Knight in the Storm Hill ever jail now? Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Now we have the tail, and we can use it once we get 27 faith. <laughs> like that's ever going to happen. Right nearby, we can run through Stormvale Castle, past the exploding barrel birds, off the ledge, across the sconce, and crash through the floor to land by this other Crucible Knight. Seems like a lot of hoopla just for one little spell, the Crucible Horns. But this spell apparently can be used to absolutely destroy Melania, not clickbait. Sure, Jan. Time for the optional Ronnie quest that is mandatory for all remembrances where Loretta gets deleted. Then we talk to Ronnie, run through the Radon Hole, and fight the Mimic Crucible Knight. Wow, these are getting so much easier lately. For some reason, the Regal Ancestor Spirit gives us a little trouble. To clarify, doesn't kill us, just takes forever, and we can't seem to hit it with the big slam, so we gotta chase it all around the room. It's silly. Then we dig a little deeper. What if you asked FromSoft for a Crucible Knight Spirit Ash, but they said, we have a Crucible Knight Spirit Ash at home. It's just the mimic. Quick trade to Ronnie for the knife for the statue. It's finally over, so we thanked her like we thanked Gostok. Yeah, that makes the moon god lady mad, so I have to go get the Celestial Mountain Dew from the Turtle Pope. Do you ever, like, pause when you, like, say lore stuff about Elden Ring and realize that it kind of sounds like you're having a stroke? I'm mad at Ronnie. It's annoying how much we have to run around for every time, and you know what? I don't want to. We're just gonna go to Nakron, jump down, and fight some more Crucible. Knights. Wow, Godfrey really has to do something about this whole infighting situation. This is not working out. We get the shield, which weighs 11 pounds, so we will not be using it. The other Spear Knight just drops a somber stone, nothing special. The gargoyles can be a bit of a pain, but we're bringing enough pain here to make it really easy. The poison floor is the worst move they have. It just ticks away at your health when you're poisoned, but also ticks away at your health when you're standing in it really fast. Still fine, just hit hard enough and we'll crash through the fight. Our path through the deep root depths is secure. We can squish some ants on the way in for some rune arcs and more runes. More importantly, we can fight Saluria, which is just a weaker version of the Spear Knight we already killed with worse methods of violence. This is super easy, barely an inconvenience. It drops Saluria's tree, a great spear that does a big piercing drill attack. It's not like it could be better than the huge slammy sword, unless... Life is good, but it can be better. <laughs> oh my God. Level it up, and then we'll go back and head down the waterfall. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. First demo of the spear's 
big old Ash of War is against this Astell Jr. It's absolutely bananas. It's charged. It has massive range. Maybe not quite on the level of the Cyclops laser that the Frenzied Flame gets, but it's huge. The damage is really, really good, and we don't even have the Alexander Jar Shard yet. It's going to be ridiculous. Say hi to Phalanx Demon's Holes, get crushed by some balls, and then grab the rest of the Glove Wart we need to max out the Mimic. We can grab a Somber 8 from the Lake of Rot, we'll need it later for the Spear, and then head into Astell. He kills us, but that's my fault. I dodged the tail poorly. When we actually use the Spear against him, it's incredibly strong. And having something to hit Astell with from a distance is so much better than dealing with his Bongo Bongo attacks. Back to Deep Root for the path through to the Royal Capital. We do have to do some hot swapping action against Fia's champs. The Mimic can use the sword because I don't like it as much as the spear. Is it really that much better though? Yup. Royal Capital time. The Erd Tree Avatar is not a problem, nor are Godfrey's other favorite students, the Grave Warden Duelists. Blast it. We can even show off to Godfrey. Wait, this isn't Godfrey. It's like some pale imitation, a shade of him. Even though he has the spiky stomp, we destroy him. Hey, where's the spiky stomp, Ash of War? So many enemies do it, it wouldn't even give us big aerial mobility like the Angel Wings would. It would just be kind of cool. We could summon more God, but uh, hot swapping's kind of annoying. Let's just delete him. With the Stance Pressure tier, we're able to break him down from a distance, run in, and get a big boosted crit from the Talisman. He's almost dead by the time he starts coughing. Yeah, if the range and damage weren't enough, the Spears Ash of War also has good stance damage. You can tell me Crucible spells are good all you want, but they don't get boosted until you get the Crucible Armor. And if you get the Crucible Armor, you have either the Spear or the Sword. So like, why would you use those instead of these? It's like going to a buffet that has oyster crackers next to garlic toast. Get the garlic toast. Wow, we're jumping right into the Four Biden land, skipping an entire stream because my capture card was being funky. And hey, Four Biden lands reminds me it's kind of fucked up that the only thing we have a budget for is war. Any social service that would help actual Americans? Too expensive. Need money for another forever war? Yeah, we got some lying around. I hate it. I thought about fighting the gargoyle, but I also hate fighting the gargoyle. So we don't do that. And we can't aim for the head. Just skip it. Mountaintops of the Giants, we might as well blow up Borealis. His face can't handle our length, but the roar is so annoying. Really don't like it. We win and get some extra runes, but it was probably more trouble than it was worth. Fire Giant's also pretty trolly, not in phase one. We just break the ankle, break the stance, la -ti da onto phase two. That's where it becomes an issue because the lock-on is not great at hitting the giant's face or hands. Instead, we just get sloppy between his thighs with our spear. Didn't bring in the other knight since that would be pretty terrible keeping up with this dude. He rolls around all the time. It's just not going to work. We win. Just takes a while. Now, Pharaoh Missoula is home to the other most famous gank fight in this game, the Godskin Duo. And they are are nothing compared to the Crucible Knight duo. A lot of people were asking while I was fighting the Crucible Knight duo, do I think that the Godskins are worse? No, no. The Crucible Knights are so much worse. Let's figure out all the reasons why. Number one, Bernie. He's the best companion summon in the game. He's got big armor, big stance pressure that makes up for the penalty you get for summoning, and his Ash of War heals him to keep him alive. Just the best. Two, the columns work. It wouldn't help all that much, but if the columns in the Crucible Knight arena just actually did anything, it would be a different fight. Three, Three, something we're not really using here, but bleed. Crucible Knights don't bleed, probably because they're trees. Four, one of the Godskins is slower. Not the one you might think. The Noble is actually the one who's got those cardio skills, but at least the snaky one is pretty slow. You can kite them a bit better. And finally, this might seem weird, but you have to beat the Fire Giant to get here. Unless you're using glitches. Fighting the Crucible Knights at level 34 was the biggest issue, and just adding together the mandatory bosses you'd have to fight, Fire Giant, Morgoth, and the Godfrey Shade, you'd have 380,000 runes, or enough to put you at level 56. It's ignoring every other boss you have to fight on the way in or upgrades, but you also have the upgrade materials you can get in the Royal Capital on the mountaintops of the Giants. All that to say, yeah, Godskins, better fight. We use the spear. It's really good. That's how this fight goes. Hey, what if it was better though? We talked to Alex in a hot tub, then try to hit the magma worm. Hey, get, get, get back here. I have to kill you so I can warp out and because it's easy. Now we'll make the swag jump and fight Alex, break his stance and then drill him for access to his innards. Hot stuff. More importantly, we get the Shard of Alexander that gives us another 15% damage boost to our Ashes of War, absolutely cranking the damage with the drill. Then on the bird run, we grab the Somber Stone 10 so we can max out the spear. Check out how good it is against the Draconic Tree Sentinel. This is tree versus tree action. One tree has fire, one has drill. You might think 
think fire is better, especially since our Ash of War is pretty slow. But our poise is so strong, we can get donked by a fireball and still drill. It lets us carry through and we get the tree to drop a bunch of sap or runes, either or. Poise is very cool. Malekith can be a problem for some builds. Not this one. Hell, we beat the next three mandatory bosses in around six minutes. Yikes. For some reason though, Malekith's stance doesn't break. Crucible mimic slamming him, we're drilling him, and he doesn't fall over. Don't you know I'm still standing? I mean, you're not really standing. You died. Next up, Gideon. Are we spamming the Ash of War? Unfortunately, no. He has this weird ability where he turns into a ball on the floor. Don't like it. That means we have to walk forward and hit R1. It's not hard. Godfrey time. This is our true boss, and uh, I think we deserve a promotion. Spear takes him down to phase two really fast. Then he makes earthquakes, and we can stay safely far away with the spear. Rikus stands after the shockwaves. That's a win. Now, Rikard is easier with the Serpent hunter but much like we have a crucible knight spirit ash at home we also have a serpent hunter at home it's long enough to hit rykard in the lava and it turns out charge attacks from a great spear break his stance pretty fast also our big old armor gives us enough poise to get a bunch of hits off before we get flinched by the magma i was saving the ash of war for phase two and i guess that's a good call we don't miss his big ass body and it hits him great till we run out of magic and have to go back to poking honestly i'm just happy this wasn't a pain in the ass rykard can ruin my day time to get our last spell we have to interrupt up to Tanith's meal. Sorry about that. Uh-oh, Kronk is upset. It's another Crucible Knight, and this one has a Fire Breath spell. Hey, buddy, spells are trash. Get an Ash. Absolutely deleted. Then we max out our seal, which is pretty easy since it was already plus 19 from, um... Now the Mimic can use spells against Radagon. He's got 0% fire resistance, but he also has a big hammer and we're moving kind of slow. So I got to work on the timing of it. Attempt two, it goes better. He can parry the Spear Ash of War and it puckered me up a little bit. By the time we hit the Elden Beast, the other Crucible Knight is dead. So we're alone. That's fine. The Elden Beast is slow and we can swing really, really hard. It gets kind of close for like a second. Not really a big deal. I'm pretty practiced on this fight and the tree armor has the highest holy resistance in the game. Radagon is is way more of a problem. Speaking of problems, the rest of the remembrances. Did I say problems? I meant drill fodder. First up, Castle Soul, past the grace in the church. I know it's there. I've used it. I used it in older runs. I just don't anymore because I'd rather get the elevator shortcut and run to the elevator. Also, don't need it because we're just going to first try Nile. He tries to hit us with a three on two gank, but look, it's already one on two. That's the power of a drill. Once it's two on one, we're done with it even faster than we corrected the gank. Then we grab the other Halig Tree pieces and we're in the consecrated snowfield. Time to try out the shoulder tackle, Crucible Horns. It is fun. It's fine. Kind of janky, seems hard to aim, but it's funny when the enemies go up. Let's try the fire breath against the putrid avatar because it's weak to fire. The fuck? Terrible spell. Hitting our ones with the spear is better. Then we test the tail against, uh, hey Corey, who did we test the tail against? <laughs> Got it. Theodorix kills us because his magma is too big. Come on. That shouldn't, that shouldn't kill us. Whatever. Come back and bring in the other knight. It's an easy win. Try the shoulder tackle again against the Penguin Noble. Like, I don't know. The windup seems bad. It whiffs in weird ways with a weirdly long cooldown. I don't really like it. Couple quick remembrance bosses in Moog when we fight Moog. The other knight plays tank and we blow him up from the back. He's almost dead by the time he goes for phase two, but manages to heal up and we gotta chug that jug. It's an easy win though, just keep drilling. Placidious Axe, same deal, snipe. We start sniping it while it loads up the big nuke. We're far enough away, we can make it out safely. I've never been punished once in my entire life. Stance break before he starts teleporting, we ram the spear through his eye, then bait him into a wall and hit him while he does the Omega laser. Nothing bad. On our way to the curse mark of death through the study hall, figured out that you can quit out to despawn that perceptor that's always shooting at us. I also figured out you can fall off and die. Interesting, I'm gonna jot that down for next time. Get the Curse Mark of Death and hug Fia to fight Fortisax. Did you know Fortisax is actually a second Serpent Hunter fight? Well, it is. You just have to use a Silurius Tree and blast the head for huge damage. Look at that. Mamma Mia! 
Here we go again, nothing to report in the liturgical town. The spear is great for skewering snails. This little summon can escargo screw itself. Swag jump, Loretta. Hey, did you know spears are good against enemies on horseback? Especially when you can use them like a gun. We basically have a rocket launcher in a medieval setting. It shouldn't be a surprise this is so effective. Apparently, I pronounced elephant town wrong in all my other videos, so sorry, elephant town goes fine. There's actually a great place to use the charge horn spell. It gets through the waterfall a little quicker, even faster than holding circle. Little whoopsie falling off to grab the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. I didn't die. Just pretend you didn't see it. We, you know, quit out, cycle back, it's fine. Time to see if the Crucible Horns really does make Melania free. It knocks her down, very cool, but then she does this thing, this weird thing. She moves or uses an attack with super armor. When people say you can use this to cheese Melania, I think they just mean it knocks her down? But there's plenty of stuff that knocks her down better than this. It doesn't have a bunch of end lag that leaves you open to get murdered if you whiff, which it does if she moves. Something she does. Lots. One other thing that knocks her down? Crucible Spear Ash of War. It also lets you stand far enough away to reliably run from the Ducky Dance. And it hits harder. And it does more stance damage. And it looks cooler. But as long as you don't care about practicality, ease of use, safe of use, or aesthetics, that shoulder horn spell is also good. This is just better, you know, in all the ways that count. In phase two, she's in an onion. We can shoot her for free. Couldn't do that with the horns. Mimic Knight also helped, but it would only mess up the shoulder tackle strategy anyway. And the Mimic Knight is dead. We get her to Onion again and blast her for free. I have no idea why you would use the spells when you have to get the weapons to get the armor that boosts them. We finished the run at 10 hours even with 42 dead bosses and 105 deaths. And that puts it in D tier, right behind Edward Elric. But for science, what if we scooped off four hours and 100 deaths that we took to get the gear? How would this have done? It's literally the best run we've ever done. If we just scoop off the four hours we took fighting Crucible Knight and the 100 deaths we took there. The spear is so good. The sword is so good. The spells are, you don't have to use the spells. Get your big armor, get your badass weapon, use those ashes of war and make it better the only way you can by summoning a mimic to have all the cool shit you can't hold. Really, you should just kill the sleeping dragon in Grail or fight the duo with a spirit ash or something and enjoy some of the coolest stuff in the game. If you wanna watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Sometimes they're fun, sometimes I suffer. Join the Patreon to support the channel. It's the best place to do it and the best place to get exclusive episodes and make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one here.